Yeah, I've like I've been doing interviews for like just a little like over a year and like I've gotten to interview like all three of like I have three favorite bands and I've gotten to interview all three of them yeah. and that's Yeah, that's crazy. Been like <laughs> That, yeah, that was... Do you find... I still do that around musicians. Do you choke up around musicians big time? Yeah. Like that you love... Oh. She says that, but she's pretty cool. She's pretty cool. You've kept it together. Yeah, a little... I mean, she'll... Like, after they leave, we do like... "Ah!" Because we're so excited about it. Mostly is there that's a room for me. that in here? No, no, like, we do it right just here the freak on the out camera. Room. You do it on camera in front of the windows? Yeah. Okay. We do a lot of things yeah. on camera in front of the windows here. I hate to tell you that. I don't but, know why I'm saying that. I broadcast literally every aspect yeah. of my life on Instagram. Yeah. So, um, there you go. But, but yeah. that's, I'm the same way. I, and, and people will be like, really? That person, you know? But I'm like, that, that, this season, um, we have Henry Rollins on our show. Um, and I don't know if you know who Henry Rollins is, but Henry Rollins, when I was growing up, he was in a band called Black Flag, and now he, he's a very prolific writer. And um, when I was growing up, man, he was, that, that was like everything. And then oh, he was on our show. I behaved so inappropriately. <laughs> like I was Just like, so excited. Yeah, no, I was like, can I get your photo, please? And he was like, do you mind if we do one take first before I... And I was like, oh, <laughs> I'm an idiot. I can't help. Yeah. Do that. I'm sorry, Mr. Rollins. I, I apologize. So, yeah, it was real weird, but that's the best. Musicians, you like, that's the best. Yeah. 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 Mm. Well, so Cody was saying I don't, like, I don't, um, like, get... Like choked up or anything a when little. I talked to yeah a little bit, but like she there was a one time I got to talk to like one of my favorite people in the entire world and Cody wasn't there for that but so she didn't see that I <laughs> who got, was that I, um her name's Dove Cameron and I got to talk to her and I like I kind of just froze (laughs) (laughs) okay but in all fairness you were in like what the school cafeteria or something on your cell phone well I was outside okay but like in school with your cell phone yeah oh hi Dove Cameron like that's huge (laughs) that's so crazy yeah that's crazy that's nuts like uh, who doesn't freak out at that I mean I've lost my cool around so many people I don't get starstruck around comics or actors most of the time but musicians oh i i geek out big time <laughs> and there are t- if i ever met cat stevens i would, would i would die. i would cry i would <laughs> seriously like i saw him uh recently i got to see him in concert at in la he does he does very limited shows and i cried i mean it was like it was one of the most beautiful concerts and it was like was something I'd always wanted to see like that his music when I was younger was like the like this really positive kind of ray of light and I, even though this wasn't for my generation my my dad had a tape but I just loved it and so I know that if I met him I wouldn't I'd just be like <laughs> <laughs> well get the smelling salts out so we can wake him up but yeah <laughs> But, uh, and I know you're struggling around me. It's hard to have big Hollywood in here. <laughs> you know, when you have extended basic cables, Ben Roy, on you. Our show is on a network in the high 80s. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, what else are you wondering, yeah. girl? Um, oh, uh,. I forgot what question I'm on. Um, you were here. <laughs> okay. And, and I think I kind he of answered, answered that, that one. one. So go ahead okay. and go with that next one. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, I follow along. It's a habit I do during interviews. It's the worst. <laughs> no, it's a good thing. Because yeah, I, I, I don't like to be sprung questions because I feel like I'm unprepared. It's the improv thing. So I, I always watch the questions that people have so I know where I'm at. <laughs> and usually in radio, that's okay because they can't see you. I know, but this this yeah. one, they can see me like, yeah. Staring you down at the sheet. Which is a little weird, but it that's is okay. strange. It's an odd head angle. I'm not going to. Don't worry. Lie. I'll just keep switching the camera like this. 
and then no one will notice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing you're following along because I keep losing track of what questions. That's all right. I'm on. That's all right. <laughs> so, um, so I'm currently binge watching the second season of I those apologize. who can't. <laughs> 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 and I was wondering, is there something that you're binge watching? Oh. Uh, oh, that's a good question. What are you? What are we binge watching? Shark Tank. Oh. I watch a lot of Shark Tank <laughs> because everybody's an entrepreneur when you watch Shark Tank. I'm always like, that was a good idea. I put, I'd say, ten percent for one hundred and seventy-five thousand. Um, and I love Mark Cuban. That guy seems like such a great guy. Um, what else are we binge watching? I well, a lot of heavy stuff. Like I've been watching Ken Burns' Vietnam War. Um, which does not make you feel very good about anything at all. <laughs> Intervention. Um, oh, God, yeah, that's sad, too. Yeah. We sh- just a sad one. Cry. <laughs> which one? Intervention. Um, yeah, let's not talk about that one. <laughs> huh? The mini snickets. <laughs> I'm trying to think, like, comedy-wise, what, I, what was the last thing that I, I binge-watched? I've been known to repeatedly, we just finished binge watching again the the british office um which is easily one of my favorite comedies of all time you like the british one the best or you like the american one i i thought the british one i love oh there's another one except that baby strapped to a man's chest (laughs) (laughs) i guess it should be that way the other way around would be very difficult it'd be so hard right (laughs) that would that would definitely be to a baby's chest yeah (laughs) we could have said that no one knows maybe the baby is walking backwards (laughs) maybe the baby is walking it's (laughs) it could be it's a very great possibility yeah Milo will be featuring for me this weekend at Comedy Works. Excellent. Uh, no, um, but I love... they. Did you ever watch The British Office? No. Oh, it is the most uncomfortable show. <laughs> I love... I thought The Office was the most uncomfortable oh, show. Oh, man, the British one. Is even Ooh. more uncomfortable? Oh, there oh. are just... It's... There are so many scenarios that he gets himself in with his talking that you're just like, oh, "Oh, God. Oh, God. But the British do that so well with their shows. Um, So I'd say the British office is probably the one that I I just finished binge watching again. But that's like the fifth time I've done that. Yeah, you've seen that (laughs) far too many times. Easy there, bud. Mm, I'm allowed to do what I want. (laughs) He's almost an adult. I'm almost an adult. He just turned 13. I have a teenage boy. It's crazy. Ah! Um, so, was there a singer or a band that inspired you to become a musician? Mm, I don't think there was necessarily, you know, one. There were more family members and moments, you know, yeah. people who gave me tapes. Like I got a tape from like my my cousin and stuff like that. So I don't know that there was one musician, but definitely um yeah, there there are only a few I'm trying to think. No, there was Okay, you don't have to have one. No, but totally Cat okay. Stevens was a big one. He's probably my favorite musician of all time. And uh I encourage everybody to listen to his music. He was uh He's beautiful, beautiful human being. And uh, so, yeah. What about you? Anybody that inspires you? Uh, um, what made you want to do well, this? Ryan Seacrest. Really? Yeah. He's a great dude, right? Yeah. Has, does he come by here? He has been here. His family runs his foundation, and they have been here a bunch. Um, oh, wow, cool. And then they work with us to get all those people on that wall over there have been in here oh. with help from the Seacrest Foundation. And, of course, we'll put your picture up there now. Oh, um, you'll just devalue the wall. Well. <laughs> well you're going to, just as long as I go beside Ed Sheeran, I'm just hoping I could get a bump on my YouTube videos. <laughs> I mean, he could spare a few hundred million views. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, what, did did anybody here meet him? Did yeah, you all I did. meet? You did. I was did, yeah. was he friendly? Very nice. Very yeah, he sincere seems like guy. A, a great guy. Very sincere guy. Very sweet. He took a lot of time with each kid and was very very genuine. Yeah, yeah. Seems like a very nice guy, and that's great. That Seacrest. That that. Would you want to do this more? Do you think yeah. more more interviewing? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a. You know what you're good at with this? 
like yeah. right off the bat, I will tell you, uh, you let people speak. It is a, it's a very difficult thing for people who interview to let the other person speak. I don't know if that makes sense, but even on radio, I don't know how many radio stations I go into where they ask you a question, you start talking and then they interject and it's like, why did you even ask me? Because <laughs> then they just want to talk about themselves. And you're amazing at, at doing that. I mean, your For questions sure. are great as well, but it's Thank really you. your personality. It's very, like, inviting. It makes people want to talk, you know. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Thank you. Do you want to know well, where we're at now? <laughs> I'm just kidding. My nervousness will tell you. My anxiety will let you know right where we're at. Um, yeah, so, um, so who is your favorite band? Oh, all right. Now you're hitting me with it. <laughs> um, well, uh, favorite band, not musician, favorite band. Oh, ooh, that's, see, I can't do that. <laughs> I know I asked okay. you to do it, but I, yes. it's an unreasonable request. Yeah, you yes. And so I knew bad. it right away when, <laughs> when I asked you, I was like, no one can possibly answer this question. Um, I would say off the top of my head right now, what I listen to the most, I listen to a lot of Band of Horses. I love Band of Horses a lot. And if you all are out there and you get a chance to listen to Band of Horses, they are terrific. Agreed. Um, we just we saw them live. We go to a lot of concerts. We take, That's cool. You take the boy to the concerts to jam out, to get out there and jam out. Um, yes. And uh, so, and I love locally, I love Nathaniel Rateliff and the Night Sweats. Um, they are terrific. Good time dance and party music. I like stuff that's just fun. You know, uh, uh, our band is, my band is super stupid and <laughs> I like super fun, stupid, like good timey dance music. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what's your favorite type of music? Rock and roll. No need to ask any other. No, that, that's, I just like stuff that's. I like it loud. I like rock and roll. Wow! You know what I mean? Wow! <laughs> Come on now. A little bit of head bopping. Hey, how are you? <laughs> totally normal. <laughs> hey, hey, how's it going? She didn't even like that. that I know. Was, that was, the second woman going to buy, she, not so much, she says. No, um, but um, but uh, yeah, definitely rock and roll. Okay. Yes. Punk, cool. punk and rock and roll. Okay, cool. Um... So, so you have a lot of tattoos, mm -mm. and um, <laughs> what? So, oh, <laughs> what have I done? I've so, got a misspelled one. No way. Yeah, uh, oh, yeah, I didn't realize it until I left that he had misspelled it. So, pretty stoked about that one. Uh, if you'll notice, it says "times a wasting" um, with a little clock on the back, but it, mm -hmm. "wasting." I don't know if they can see that in there. Uh, is is oh yeah? It's spelled oh, like your waist. Like your waist. W a i s. Like your waist. Uh, here, I'll show you. Let me get up there and just give you. The, 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 that one's the, this one right here. Oh, uh, this one. This little one, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. We'll try to get it in there. Can, is that working? Yeah. That says times a wasted. W a i s t. <laughs> like times a wasted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, I walked in to get the tattoo, and he was like, showed me the drawing, and was like, "Hey, I'll just put the writing in there." And I was like, "Sure, guy who didn't really finish high school, you can do that." <laughs> and uh, and when I left, he had misspelled a tattoo on myself. Do you have any misspelled tattoos? <laughs> well, then you are making better life choices. <laughs> Uh, anyway, what was the, what was the question about that? I didn't mean to interject. I just would like to air my grief and shame first. Do, do, you, do, you, get, do you get like a refund on that, or like no. an, an, a free tattoo? Or like... um, I'm sure he would have. Yeah. I for yeah, some do reason. Do you want to go back to him? Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, <laughs> listen, I have not been known for my quality decision making at points, but um, the uh, it's a funny story now. You know, I've told it on almost every like thing i've been at tv stuff i've told it and it's uh now it's just a story and he's one of my good friends it was a legitimate mistake it's easy to fix but i don't fix it now because it's a funny story so you gotta you gotta you gotta laugh at the mistakes too you know what i mean that's but, a good lesson yeah, yeah. <laughs> except 
don't do that. <laughs> it's not worth the lesson. <laughs> but anyway, what was the question about my tattoo? I didn't mean to. <laughs> um, I was just wondering, what was um, your first tattoo? Oh, that's a good one. It's this piece of junk down my arm right here <laughs> that makes no sense. This is what a, a phase that many of my generation went through called tribal. Um, which was a terrible phase in tattooing that is just nonsense scribbling down my arm. That makes no sense. And um, But I kept it because it's all part of the story. And it's, uh, but I have favorites. I have, um, he was three years old and uh, I asked him what I should get for a tattoo because I had a space here. And he pointed and he said, a shrimp. So I got him a shrimp with a top hat mm -hmm. on. So that's Milo's. <laughs> it's a little shrimp with a little, you can see it's kind of, he's got a little top hat on. And that was for this dude. Uh, awesome. And then that, I've got his yeah. name here. And, um, and uh, yeah, probably the time's a wasting too. Like just, time's a waste. It just, <laughs> the point was in an odd bit of irony to remind myself to not waste time. But in my, effort to not waste time i should have stopped and thought a little bit more. <laughs> but but i uh i have lobsters on my chest that say made in maine i'm from maine i grew up there and then because i love colorado i have two big horses like prairie horses on their haunches like the blue, like the one at the airport yeah, like blucifer the yeah. big horse i have two of those they are like gigantic yeah. Yeah. on my ribs um because i love colorado this is my home and and I love the prairie. The prairie. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so I think you already answered the next question. Because okay. it was, do they all have a special meaning to you? No. But the only one that does, none of them really do. I mean, they're all kind of, except for this They all have a story, one. but maybe not a a deeper huge meaning. meaning yeah I mean, okay i guess that's what i got confused with like when you were telling the story of the yeah tattoos i was like okay so this one is important to me because it was you know it was him i and then um i have and not to make it overly heavy i have a candle burning at both ends being cut in half i was i uh years and years ago had a problem with alcohol and I stopped. I've been sober for a number of years, but this was my reminder to like, stop burning the candle at both ends, you know, like, uh, you know, really like you've got to focus on caring for yourself and making sure that your well being and your mind is happy and stop trying to do it all, you know, cause that was part of the reason why. It's so I, I, yeah, I got, I got that as a reminder to just, you know, like just just focus on the healthy things, you know. So uh, rather than trying to burn the candle at both ends, you know. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. 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 I didn't go think Maya, it would go. get this serious. Go Maya, go. <laughs> go <Okay>. Maya. <laughs> Terry Gross. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite episode of those who can? Hands down. Uh, the election episode, which is in the second season, mainly because we got away with so many Home Alone references that they didn't catch, and they're Easter egged throughout the whole episode. And I just, I love that episode. Plus, we threw Fairbell out a window, which was one of the most amazing things. We got a stunt guy. They opened the window. They took the window panes out. Second floor. The guy full out. A stuntman ran and jumped out the window and into a bag. That's I've never crazy. seen and he just full gainer, like just boom out the window. I was like, how's this gonna oh my god, he's out the window. And he just did it. It was the coolest thing. So that's, cool. that's my cool. favorite. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Um so uh what was the inspiration for the season one finale of Those Who Can't? <laughs> Truthfully, the reason why every episode, and you'll notice when season two, not to give it away, Quinn is gone at the yeah. end of every episode, is because Rory is so busy. 
that we never know if he's going to come back the second, if he can come back another season with us. So we have him arrested every season. (laughs) (laughs) And then if he can make it so he comes back, then we introduce why he's able to come back. Because Rory is, you know, he's in a movie now with uh, I Feel Pretty. He's with Mm -hmm. Amy Schumer and... And yeah, so that's, that's Rory is in that. And then he's always got something. I mean, he's very in demand right now and he's been gracious enough to do the show, but it's by season by season. We can't keep him guaranteed to something. So each season we arrest him. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah. I loved in the um, season finale when I think he calls Lauren. And he's crying. And yeah, and like you don't like they don't show that he's in jail, but then you s- hear the sound of the gate closing, well, yeah. and then the camera zooms zooms out, and you see all the other people, and yeah. like they don't really explain why he got arrested yep. until the second season. Yep, and so. then there is a if you get to it, there's a trial where he goes on trial in the yeah. second season. So, uh, but yeah, it's literally each season. Is Rory coming back? We don't know. Is what's his schedule going to be like? So how do we arrest him? <laughs> uh, and that's a key to writing, kids. If you're going to write television, arrest people. <laughs> hey, how are you? How's it going? Uh, <laughs> if you're going to remember that, hey, how are you doing? Uh, how's it going? Hey, how are you? Uh, arrest people. Okay, that's there you it. go. We're, of okay. course, talking about uh, fiction, not yeah, true yeah, stuff. Not true story. <laughs> Please true don't have here. people arrested. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. Um, so, um, so, your show is so funny. And um, so, do you have to do multiple takes because it's so hard not to crack up? Yes. Anything <laughs> with Andrew, uh, with Fairbell, or with Quinn? So many we have filters. to, and the funniest human being I think at any time on set is creepy Dan Trevin, the guy who plays the creepy science teacher. Um, he, I can't keep a straight face around him. It, uh, I'm the Jimmy Fallon on set. Like they'll all, I break takes more often. Uh, they get mad at him. Yeah, they get so mad at me because I laugh at it. It's funny to me. So I am totally Jimmy Fallon. Like if you watch, there's times where they've kept takes where I'm clearly cracking a smile and trying to keep it because I, I, I didn't come from this. I grew up in a small town in Maine. Uh, I didn't really ever, I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. So there's a certain part of me that's always like, what am I doing here? This is, you know, so I'm kind of, uh, yeah, I have a lot of fun with it. So I break a lot. Cool. Yeah. um, So, um, yeah, in uh, the episode before the season one finale, um, you get, trapped in the school with Quinn and Fairbell yeah. and Lauren and for various reasons um, you have to go to the lost and found and find new clothes. Are you talking and about the badonks? Yeah, the badon- you, you wear you end up wearing bedazzled jeans that are too tight and uh, Well, I think that's personal opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I looked great. <laughs> My wife came to set and saw me in it, and her first words were, "Oh no!" That was because <laughs> I can only imagine if she she's like my husband. I'm so I'm so proud. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I thought that was so funny that well, because you because you couldn't even walk in there. Yeah. So. If you haven't, it, there's a very subtle. If you don't watch the show, but it, it, I, this. The character of my character is supposed to see himself as a tough guy, and he's always being um, taken down. And we did that on purpose to, to like basically make him a paper tiger. He's not a tough guy, and we're trying to constantly emasculate Shoemaker because he's to us the he's toxic masculinity you know he's not he's an unhealthy man you know so like we're always trying these you know and then we like to just 
make him as uncomfortable as possible <laughs> um, because it, it, it's silly to try to be in, be tough. You know what I mean? Like just be honest with yourself because if you try to be tough, you just end up your real emotion comes out of how scared you are or whatever. So that's yeah. what Shoemaker is. He's so, yeah, okay. but I looked great. Yeah. I will see. I think it's, it's not fair to say I, it was too tight, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was gross. It was real, yeah, they real, were, they were did not. not do good things for my body. <laughs> yeah. I said, I looked like one of those stress balls when oh, you yeah, squeeze, squeeze them. Really. It, yeah. <laughs> not pretty nope. <laughs> um, no um well i love in so in one of the episodes of um season two you like um you say like to lauren you're like oh so rap is just like like talk therapy yeah <laughs> and oh, i thought that was so that funny. episode is an episode you should not have watched <laughs> okay <laughs> Like we said, this is Did a good show, it? but definitely oh, okay. get okay. parents' permission yeah, we before don't watch watching it. watch it with her. So. Okay, well then I dig. I think it's cool. I dig you. You're a great parent. Um, <laughs> he's been to set too, and I'm oh, always yes. like, oh, this is not. But um, yeah, the hip hop episode is a personal favorite of all of ours. That was Adam's idea. He 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 loves Eminem in real life. Adam does. He's a huge Eminem yeah, fan. So, you know. But yeah. yeah. I I love when he like turns into Macklemore. Oh, that's the best. <laughs> and no one understands what he's rapping about. <laughs> it's he did it so and his. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, yeah cuz Adam is so not a rapper, but it, it's so good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that means a lot that you like that episode cuz we're we're big fans of that episode. Uh, season two, the network was like a little weird. Uh, you guys kind of went off the rails a little bit. And we're like, I know. So this season is so grounded. It's and there's a lot more kids in season three. There's a lot more of the students and our interaction with the students. And uh, there's some great new characters. Season three is going to be. Yeah, it's great. It's the funniest to me out of all of them so far. So And Fairbell's cool. running the school when it starts. So you can't beat that. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, I, think, uh, I think you're on the next page. But I didn't look. Okay. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't look, I swear. <laughs> Okay, well, so do you have a pre-show ritual, like, before um, mm -hmm. concerts or filming or stand-up? Nope. No, um, I'm usually like, just let me at them. I mean, I, I wish I could say that I, a lot of comics do, but I just kind of chill out and watch TV. It's become so second nature to be on stage now that I just don't, um, I don't really think about it all that much. I... Yeah, I wish I could say that I... Do you have one before you broadcast? Do you do anything like... Um, no, not really. No? Yeah. No, you just kind of take it easy and I, I I actually start to get nervous when I don't have something going on, so I always try and keep myself busy. And, yeah, you know, if like you're allowed to... scripts or doing stuff like that, just so I don't... You just think about yeah. what you're about to do too much, you know? Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, because... Yeah, I probably the only pre show ritual I do is usually there's a comic before me because I'll headline or whatever is uh my pre show ritual is when is this guy getting off the stage? <laughs> I just say that to myself like so many times. <laughs> is it my turn yet? Uh but other than that, no. I wish I, I it's just second nature. Okay, so like you don't ever get nervous or anything? I mean a big enough, like some shows where they really matter, like, you, you know, not that every show doesn't matter, so where there's a lot, like I'm auditioning for something, you know, that then I'll get a little bit nervous, but it's more an excited. It's not a, um, like, I don't want to do this. It's more of a, I get more nervous for stuff like this. This makes me more nervous because I don't want to, this is your thing and I don't want to ruin it or say something <laughs> weird or whatever. So I'm too late. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You didn't have to bail on it. You should have ran with it. <laughs> now I see you have a heart and I'm going to really dig in. <laughs> uh, no, no. I, uh, Hey, there's another kiddo. Hi friend. Hi. <laughs> um, so, but, uh, 
<laughs> well, he didn't even wave at me. He just smiled. Well, we we should have just <laughs> snuck this one on him. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> Was so did you they can hear it outside. They can hear that outside. Can they hear the broadcast outside? Yeah, every oh. every word you're saying. No way. Yeah way. Ladies across the hall, seated on the bench. They probably can't hear you that far away. Oh okay, never mind then. But maybe they can. But closer to us, yes. Yeah okay. So anyway, sorry. Um, but no, I, I I not no. I mean um, more more for the things you'd be like that makes you nervous. You'd you'd be surprised. Okay. Yeah. So. Actually, that I wasn't on the next page. But, but now, now she I is. Am, so. Well, yeah, you were not looking at it correctly. Focus. Yeah. Can you focus, please? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Maya. I've ruined okay. it. <laughs> so, Look at um, these kiddos. What's up? Hey, hi. How are you? Say hi, wave. <laughs> yeah. And honey, oh, you easy too. there, lime green blazer. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so do you have a motto or a quotation that you live by? Do I? Do you think I do? I don't know. Do I ever re He'd know. I'd repeat it to him probably if I did. I don't, I don't know. You repeat a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Uh, I don't know. Um, you don't have to have one. It's okay if you say no. I mean, I, I hate but, saying it, but I'm definitely... A, I feel like you do. I, I feel like the golden it. rule is always good to, you know, I try to just treat people how I would want to be treated and talk to people how I would want to be talked to. And, um, you know, but I mean, I, I think that would probably be the big one. I, um, and also, you know, I, I, I think we forgot how to be nice to each other. Like it's that's pretty a, important. Yeah. yeah, especially nowadays. I mean, it's, it seems like everybody's very. There's a lot of anger around social media and on social media and whatnot. And uh, I just, I think, you know, I mean, I just hope people step back and remember how to be, you know, friendly and nice to each other. And just we're all just afraid and trying to get through days. And you know, and so I don't know. What about you? Do you have one? I mean, I think it's kind of like that. Just be kind. Yeah. You know? Just. It's. Uh, I think that's. But if you ask most people, what about you? Do you do you have? Um, I don't really know. I mean, <laughs> um, I uh, one of my favorite singers. Um, his name is John Clausen, and. He has um, has this quote where, that says "Now matters," which is one of my favorites. Yeah. Which, um, yeah. So that I think that's, that's the quote. one that comes to mind. Totally, yeah. and it does matter. Yeah. And I think as he's getting older, hey, how are you? <laughs> Couple blue vests going on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, those All are right, our the super, party animals showed up. We're down right here there. at, and <laughs> we're partying right now. We got the in crew studio gals. They're here. They're in their blue blazers. And uh, do you like my radio voice, or is it disconcerting? It's a, I mean, a little disconcerting. It, does it sound yeah. like? Does it sound like drive time radio right now? Though, I mean, do I? If I get it, I mean, if I really amp it up, you know what I mean. Uh, we're going to be heading down to Alpine Power Sports in just a little bit. We're going to be giving away oh tickets to see uh, Chingy and Seven Dust live at Adams County <laughs> Fairground this weekend. Uh, and, of course, we're going to have a couple visitors come down. Uh, we're going to be racing pedicabs. You know, no, um, I think, yeah, I think that that's now matters. I heard another great one that I always repeat to myself a lot, which is there was a terrific documentary, if you have not seen, which is it's called God Grew Tired of Us. And it's about Sudanese Lost Boys, and it's a terrific documentary. And they, the Sudanese regularly say we are multiples. And uh, it's just that one that stuck with me, and it means that throughout your life, you're, th you're dozens of different people. Um, and you evolve and change and to not fight that. Like, to be okay with the fact that you're different people at different points in your life, you know? And I think we kind of tend to battle against that sometimes, that we feel differently and we're okay with certain things at some points that we're not okay with at others. Um, but you change and you evolve. We're multiple people in a lifetime. So, you know, don't, don't 
don't fight against that, you know, and just be okay with the fact that you're an evolving piece of work, you know, so. Yeah. It's good uh, advice. Yeah. yeah. Something good to remember. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's another quote that I really like that um, it's by this actor and singer named Ross Lynch. And it said, um, he says, music is poetry with personality. Yeah. And that that's one of my favorites. Oh, too. yeah. So that's great. Yeah. yeah. I, I uh, Music is transcendent. It'll and they even do it now with like to help people with memory mm -hmm. and things like that. And it, because it stimulates so many different parts of the brain, it's, it's instinctual and primal for us to create music. We've been learning guitar together. We've been yeah. learning the guitar. We've been playing some Johnny Cash. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's really cool. And st that's a way we've bonded a lot for as sure. well. I didn't like him prior to this. <laughs> First 11 years. We're real touch and go with this guy. You know what I mean? But... Uh, We've come around on the guitar, haven't we, son? You should just stop talking. Thank you. <laughs> My editor says no go. <laughs> Maya, what's your final question, girl? So, who do you consider to be a real life superhero and why? Well, I think that changes at any point. Um, I'd say right now, relevant current events, that pilot on that Southwest flight. If you have not listened to the air traffic control that 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 pilot, you can go on YouTube. The amount of you know what we um, totally don't know any current events here, oh. really. So I don't even know. Like I don't even own okay, a TV. So I don't watch the news. Southwest. But he did something cool. No, it was she. She uh, did she, something cool. She was a, one of the first Navy pilots to ever fly an F eighteen, um, and she flew. She flies for Southwest. Uh, they took off from New York, and the engine blew up. Uh, and it, there, I mean, completely blew up, blew a hole in the side of the plane. And she landed a, a limping plane. And you can listen to her air traffic control chatter. And she kept her cool That's the cool. entire time. It was, and she yeah. saved everybody's lives. I think that those are the people, the people that remember what they're taught. Remember to slow things down. Now matters. Just just don't look ahead and don't, you know, um, don't don't focus on what you can't control so much. And, and I think if you listen to and I also think now we're talking a lot about, you know, women's rights and empowering women. That's a prime example that women can do every single thing that it, and anybody who believes that should listen to the way in which this this pilot carried herself and it and it was it's amazing. It is so calm. She's so matter of fact. She gives tells them what she needs. She lands the plane. She helps everyone deboard after that. And that it, it that's was cool. th that's a superhero yeah. to me, you know. And yeah. uh, I will say, I thought of my favorite quote. I don't know why I didn't think of it, <laughs> and I knew it would come to me. It's tattooed on me, and I don't know why. <laughs> so just proof that don't get tattoos. They won't help you remember <laughs> <Okay>. something. <laughs> uh, it's a Japanese proverb. And it says, if you fall at seven, rise again, rise at ten, because life begins in every breath. So and they believed the the samurai and bushido code believed that if you fell down at a speed of seven, get back up faster than you fell, because if you're breathing, you're alive, and life starts there every time. So if something bad goes wrong, keep trudging forward. You know what I mean? Yeah. Excellent. High five on that one. <laughs> I just sounded, Ooh. you know what I mean? I sounded That's deep. deep. My waters yeah. run deep. Yeah, man. You know what yeah. I mean? This is this is not a shallow little reservoir here, all right? <laughs> yeah, this is this isn't a mill pond. This is the Mariana's Trench I just gave you all right there. All well, right, I wish I could drop this mic, but you can't. It's, it's attached. Stuck. Yeah, it's definitely stuck. To it's yeah. stuck there. Yeah. How? Well, on that note, we'll just tell you. Thank you so much for coming in. No, and I'm. So Sorry, I'm, I, 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 to anybody watching this and to you all, I'm sorry I'm so long-winded. It's part of my nervousness, <laughs> but but thank you for inviting me and thank you for doing what you do. This is, yes. and I'm serious. Okay. I'm not. I have no reason I could have just not said anything. But you do a terrific job at this, and you thank should you. continue doing this a lot. Thank you. Yeah, no thank problem. You.
Yay! And now, for those up. of you guys give it up, up on ups- ones and twos, yeah. give it up for DJ. What's up? D-D-D-D-D-J. For those of you upstairs, of course, this is our buddy. Aren't we now we get to call you our buddy because we've got to meet you. This mm-hmm. is our buddy Ben Roy. He's from a TV show on True TV called Those Who Can't. Definitely get permission from mom or dad before watching it. But he doesn't know this yet. But he's going to leave us with some autographs. So if you need an autograph, give us a call seven four five zero zero. We'll make sure we get one of those run up to your room. Anything else you want to say, Maya? Uh, no, just thank you so much for oh. coming. No, and thank you, and thanks for letting Milo hang out. Yeah, yeah. this is this is awesome. I, I mean, he did talk this. a lot. I know he, we <laughs> we kind of were like, Ugh. <laughs> all right, all you're right. awesome. Thank you so thank much, you guys. And uh, yeah, thank we'll you. Look forward to catching season three. Yay! Woo!